Discarding Down with Stymie and Gums, an audiobook by Rich Baritone, read by Rich Baritone. Chapter 2, Part 2, Gums. I tried to get Schlitzy back, but by that time I was incubating jizz again because that's what sluts do. I paid a doctor to put me on bed rest so that I would have an excuse to miss the visitation social services set up for me to see Schlitzy. Social services didn't buy it, and the courts terminated my parental rights. I was so upset. They didn't care about how many dicks I had to suck to get the money for that doctor to put me on bed rest for nine months so I would have an excuse to not honor the visitation arrangements, yet still get my way. He was put up for adoption the same day my daughter fell out of my snatch. I named her Aileen. We were hungry and living in a storm drain. My daughter's father would prostitute me out and beat me when I came home broke. Our starvation intensified. One day, I left Aileen with someone I thought was my friend. For two weeks. She called social services and told them I had been gone for three months. I pulled up to the dumpster to get my baby just as they were taking her away. I was told she did nothing but eat for two weeks. I tried as hard as I could to get her back. I knew I needed help, so I tried to get into a rehab where I could keep my daughter with me, even though I did not have custody of her. They told me the only way they would admit me is if I hurt myself. I left, pulled all of my teeth with a bottle opener, and returned. They laughed at me, told me they couldn't believe I was dumb enough to believe such obvious bullshit, and called the police to have me removed from the premises. I had no stable home for her as I was living in a trash can. I was also in trouble with the law for writing bad checks, which I should be allowed to do. At this point, it all seemed hopeless. Since I didn't really care about my child, I surrendered my parental rights so as to again avoid all responsibility in life because a dog humped my leg when I was six. Every nine years or so, I wonder if she became a fat, toothless, failed prostitute like me. One day, I set up a Facebook page to find my discarded spawn. I haven't heard from What's-Her-Face, but I did find Schlitzy. I'm so proud of him. He works as a bell ringer for a gothic church in Transylvania. Though he won't talk to me, primarily because he's mute, he did friend me on social media. It is my hope that this meaningless gesture from Schlitzy will develop into a close relationship so I can steal money from him. I also hope to find my daughter so I can open credit cards in her name. After I lost my daughter, I went on the run and ended up with a door-to-door -door ass wiping crew that took me to purgatory. Since I won't wipe my own ass, let alone someone else's, that left me in a hotel in Fumble Nuts where I met Stymie for the first time. I also found out that night that what they say about black guys isn't true at all. Sex with Stymie was so traumatic I decided to go back to whoring, so I went to an escort service. They laughed at first, then drew guns and ordered me to leave. As I was walking out, I saw a man shitting on the curb. I had just met my now ex-husband. I got pregnant immediately. I can't remember, but I know it was either a boy or a girl. 